In today's episode of Beat the Icon, we're taking a look at one of Kershaw's most quintessential EDC knives. First introduced in the year 2000 and designed by the one and only Ken Onion, it's the Kershaw Leak. So even now, over 20 years after its original introduction, the Leak continues to be a very strong seller. And what's interesting is, this is a knife that has somewhat at least transcended beyond just the knife enthusiast circles. Granted, not to the same extent as something like a buck knife or a Swiss Army knife, but the Kershaw Leak does have a reach beyond just the enthusiast niche, which is a pretty cool thing and really hard to do nowadays. As a little bit of sort of anecdotal evidence for that, one of the interesting things I've found working here at the Knife Center is, well, perhaps not surprisingly, not everyone who comes to work here is a knife enthusiast. And yet, more often than any other knife, by a pretty wide margin, when inevitably some of those people pick up their, purchase their first pocket knife, it's been a Kershaw leak a bunch of times. And it's pretty easy to see why when you delve into it. The knife is reasonably priced. It's made in the USA. It's certainly distinctive, especially if you know, you're more familiar with more traditional knives. And beyond that, it's just a pocket knife for those times when you really need just a pocket knife. The knife is slim, making it very easy to carry. And even if you stick with just the base stainless steel handled model, it has an aesthetic that I think works well in fancier situations as well as more dressed down situations. It really has that broad cross section covered quite nicely. Now sticking with just the classic version right here, we'll go through the features of the knife. We have a Warncliffe blade, three inches long, and currently it uses Sandvik's 14C28N steel. If uh, in layman's terms, what that essentially means is you've got a knife that takes a very fine edge quite easily, and it's very tough for a stainless steel, which makes the thin blade and the hollow grind on this particular version paired with that steel a great combination. Of course, with the shape, you've got that needle-like tip and an edge with just a hint of belly that's gonna allow very sharp and very precise cuts overall. We have a frame lock here on the back for security and a two position pocket clip so you can carry it tip up or tip down. In addition to that, you can see we've got a safety slider. Essentially, it moves a small tab into the way of the blade so that if it is closed, and that is engaged, it's not gonna accidentally come open, which is a good peace of mind if you want it, but of course, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. But the reason you see that feature on this knife is we've got an assisted opening blade here, and I'll get into what that is in a second. But when this knife was introduced, it was still a fairly new kind of concept, new technology. So that added peace of mind was a strong selling point, even though you don't really see them as much nowadays. What I mean by that speed safe assisted opening is you've got nice crisp action. Now it's importantly, not a switch blade, at least not the way the industry defines things. Check your local laws, of course. We have a spring assist. It's exactly like it sounds. Once you move the blade part way open, as you can see there, it's not opening fully on its own yet. But once you get past a certain point, the spring takes over and assists in finishing the opening action of the knife. And what that means is you've got quick and repeatable action every time. Now due to the popularity of the leak, there is way more than just one single variation. Tons of different options available nowadays. For instance, you can get the leak with an aluminum handle if you want some nice color as opposed to the, uh, the flat bead blasted gray of the standard version. This version right here features an orange handle and the aluminum versions have a liner lock rather than a frame lock. So you can get that same great color on the back too. And then this version right here is also one of the many options with upgraded blade steels. This, we have a knife center exclusive with S35 VN powder steel, a very premium upgrade compared to the base version. Interesting thing that you're gonna find on the powder metals and the, uh, the higher end alloys, you're gonna see a flat grind as opposed to the hollow grind on the Sandvik steel versions. And the reason for that is actually pretty simple. The equipment they use to do the hollow grinds on the base models 
has a harder time doing it on the higher end metal. So you get a flat grind. What you get in the trade-off there is a little bit more strength behind the edge as opposed to having that very thin edge. So if you want something or you want a leak with a little more kind of meat behind its bones, you can opt for one of these. You also see Kershaw using the leak as sort of a way to showcase all the other stuff they do. Uh, for instance, uh, you've got this version right here, which features their composite blade technology. You can see the spine and the edge portion of the blade kind of fit together like puzzle pieces. And you've got two different metals in this case. At the edge, we've got CPM D2 for a nice longer lasting edge again, and tougher than your standard run of the mill D2 tool steel. And you've got a spine that is yet again, tougher still for a little more strength back there. Now Kershaw was not the first one to do a black stonewashed finish, but they are the company that has trademarked the term black wash because they really helped push this towards the more mainstream sector of the industry. Now these are just a few of the plethora of different options. There's fancier stuff, more premium stuff all around, but even the base model starting at about 65 bucks right now, I think it's still a pretty good value for an American made folder nowadays. Now here's where I think things start to get a little interesting. And that is when we try to think of what are the natural competitors to the Kershaw leak. This knife is about 22 years old from its initial initial release right now. If this had come out in the last five or six years, within a year or two, we would have seen the competitors come out with their knives that are clearly kind of gunning for the same niche and the same success that this model would have. But in a way, this kind of predates that cycle that we've seen of late. So we have to be a little bit more creative, shall we say sometimes, to see the natural competition. And then interestingly, again, I think a lot of the most natural competition right now actually comes from Kershaw themselves. And I'm going to start with the dividend. Here it is next to the leak, as you can see. And originally they did have some more affordable versions of the dividend, but they've uh, relegated this now to more premium status only. As such price wise, I've got two versions here in front of me, we've got for about 100 bucks, this aluminum handled 20 CV steel version, as well as this composite blade version again with CPM D2 at the edge, which I think that one is absolutely the cooler looking knife and actually one of the coolest looking knives of the last few years full stop. And it's only about five bucks more than the 20 CV version. But that 20 CV ver version especially maintains the high value proposition of the Kershaw leak. You've got an aluminum handle with a liner lock, the same assisted opening system as the leak and that premium 20 CV steel. Talking another bump up even above the S35 Vienna, that knife center exclusive leak we looked at earlier in terms of your edge retention, all for that very nice price, just under a hundred bucks. The design is maybe a little bit more tactical looking than the leak, or at least some of the standard versions of the leaks. Could make the argument that the, uh, the composite blade version we have leans into the tactical uh, vibes a little bit more, but you've got a more prominent flipper tab on this knife for a little more protection from your hand sliding forward and about the same handle length behind, behind that, I would say, despite the dividend feeling like a slightly larger knife. We've got a powder steel here, like I mentioned, so you do have a flat grind. Now the blade is pretty much as thin as the leak and the grind, the flat grind is even higher. So actually it's even a little bit better of a slicer in that regard. And we have this swedge along the spine to remove a point of drag when you're powering through a slice, especially if the slice starts to curve at all. That's always a nice thing. The other thing you'll see, which is an advantage over the leak is the pocket clip here. It is deep carry, which, you know, depending on preferences could be a plus or minus, but it's certainly a more popular option these days versus the non deep carry clip of the standard leak. And also the dividends clip, can be fitted into four different positions. So tip up, tip down, left or right, no problem. You can carry it exactly where you want. All right, now I wanna bring things down to, I'm gonna start with some more affordable competition than the leak. 65 bucks for the leak, again, I argue is a good value. If you can spend about $40, we have 
a knife by another very famous, very successful designer, the Zing by R.J. Martin, also from Kershaw. You've got the same, basically the same construction, I would say. The steel is different on the blade itself, but handles, stainless steel, both have speed safe assisted opening, and the blade shapes, while not identical, are close enough in vibe that I think they're pretty decent competitors. The RJ Martin design may be a little bit closer to a spear point or a little less obvious of a modified Warncliffe like the leak, but it still sits, I think, in the same ballpark. The steel on this knife is going to be an 8CR series stainless, so I wouldn't say it was, would hold an edge as well as the Sandvik steel on the leak, but it's still a pretty decent performer in this price range at least. Like the leak, the back side of the knife features a frame lock and a two position non-deep carry clip. Unlike the leak, however, you can also put that clip on the left side, tip up configuration only, it should be said. Like the dividend, I would say the action or the design feels a little bit more tactical leaning. You've got more of that finger guard there up front, but the action when you go to fire the knife is exactly what you want. All right, stepping outside the Kershaw portfolio, but sticking at that $40 price point, we have the CRKT Delineation, which I'll hold up here right next to the leak for a second to, so you can get a comparison between the two. 40 bucks, like I mentioned, three inch modified Warncliffe blade, hollow grind, stainless steel stone washed handles as opposed to the bead blast at the same price point with the Zing, which is nice. That's gonna help pocket wear you know, if other things are jangling around in your pocket and scuff this up inevitably, which is gonna happen, it's gonna blend in a little more than it would on something like the Zing. Now the feel on the delineation compared to the leak is a little more beefy feeling, I should say. You can see the blade itself is a little bit thicker and the handles feel like they have a little more meat on them and definitely a little more weight overall. Even though it's maybe slightly smaller, I can get all four of my fingers on the leaks handle and on the delineation, my pinky is just starting to sneak past the edge just a little bit. Pretty close though. Likewise, with the leak, we have a frame locking system and we have an assisted opening system as well. And it is a torsion bar assist just like the Kershaw. Now, unlike the leak, we have a deep carry pocket clip. It's single position in this case and Unlike the dividend, we actually have a small pocket milled into the stainless steel so the clip sits flush with the handle and then you've got flush mounted screws or flat top screws. So there's no kind of snag point, potential snag point when you're going in and out of the pocket. Now the last thing you'll see here on the back, Eric Oak's design it has to be mentioned as well. The last thing I'll talk about with this knife is that assisted opening mechanism. I did say it is a torsion bar system just like the Kershaw, but it's one of the easier assisted systems out there I have found to use. Works just as well as any other in the firing position, but a little easier to close. And in fact, it's bias towards closure is a little stronger than some other systems out there, which again, it's just one more thing making it that much easier to use. Now, if you like everything about the leak, except for it's assisted opening action, let's say you want something without that spring, either for personal preference or potential legal ramifications, I've got some options here too. So we're gonna start with the Kaiser Swags Swayback, and we're gonna start climbing up the price ladder here a little bit. Now there's two versions. We have a button lock version, including this Knife Center exclusive with a 4V blade, which has to be said is a pretty good bargain at about 75 bucks. However, even though the action is excellent, the flipping action I mean, the flipping action on the liner locking version is even better. And you know, the spring assist, the snappy opening action of the leak is part and parcel to its identity. So I really gotta showcase the versions of this knife that do that the best. And that would be the liner locking version. And the price on this is about 60 bucks right now, 59 even, whole dollar less right now. For that, you're getting a three inch blade N690 steel and a true Warncliffe with a completely straight edge, no belly to that. So even more kind of precision and power, some would say, to that particular shape while maintaining that very aggressive point. 
Now the N690 blade steel is a nice option. A little bit, or considered a little bit more premium than the 14C28N. Preferences being what they are, of course. And one thing you don't get with this handle compared to the Leak is something as slim. Here, I haven't held the, uh, the two up together here. You can get the vibe side by side, but check out the spine shots here. If you're going for a slim pocket carry, the Leak is definitely going to be the winner in this particular matchup. But you can get a even fuller, more solid feeling grip on this handle as a result. G10 is the handle material on choice here, but they've also got paper micarta options, the linen micarta on that exclusive we just mentioned. And um, that's about it right now, at least. There's only a handful of versions of this knife available, but they're built extremely well, especially at that $60, $59 price point. This is less money than a Kershaw leak. It's not made in the USA, so you're gonna pay for that trade-off there if that's important to you, but the quality is fantastic. Next up from Civivi, we have an Elijah Isham design. This is the McKenna. Here it is next to the leak. It's kind of, in my mind, a little bit more spidery, a little bit more arachnid feeling than the leak. So maybe a little less refined, but again, quality is where it counts and quality it has for sure. About $68 for the D2 versions of this knife, D2 tool steel. But if you want this nice Damascus blade, you can get that for about 89 right now. Three inches long, modified Warncliffe here again, full flat grind, appropriately thin. Another nice little cutter right there. The handles are G10, and this is definitely a smaller feeling knife. Not just in the looks department, but in the hand as well. My third finger is definitely, or fourth finger is definitely off the back. I'd call this a three and a half finger grip for me. Action though is quite good, even without an assisted opening. We have ball bearings in the pivot, just like the, uh, the Kaiser we just looked at. I forgot to mention that. And it is a front flipper. So different opening vibe altogether than the leak, but still something that is nice and snappy and built very well. All right, next we're coming back to the USA with outside of Kershaw's lineup, probably the most readily obvious competitor to the leak. And it's from Gerber with their fastball design. Comes in right now about $119. With that, you've got an aluminum handle construction with a liner lock, similar to the leak and the dividend, which we'll come back to, and S30V blade steel with yeah, a very similar shape to that Kershaw we first looked at. Now the major difference here is ball bearings in the pivot. No assisted opening on this particular knife. And they really did nail their action, their tuning on these knives. It's nice and snappy. Whole knife is put together very well. We've got a three position pocket clip, two on the right side, one on the left, tip up in that case. And good knife, decent value. But you can see what I mean this is not beat the icon dividend, but I do have to bring that original uh, 20 CV dividend back into the picture just for a second. For about $19 less than the Gerber, you can get the 20 CV. Again, a, a bump up from the S30 range in terms of edge retention. But if you don't like assisted opening, that's not gonna do much for you. Check out the fastball. It is a very good knife. If you don't mind assisted openings though, and you're happy with the S30 range or the S30 level, roughly. 90 bucks for that S35VN exclusive. So the Gerber, while it doesn't take the value crown compared to the Kershaw options in this list, still is deserving of being checked out because it is a fantastic knife. All right, this next one is maybe a little bit of an oddball uh, and kind of leans into what I was saying earlier about I have to be a little more creative to think of the, uh, the competition to the week. This is the only knife on the table that doesn't have something in the ballpark of the, uh, the worn cliffy blade shape of the leak. And that's the Boker LRF with its spear point profile. And I got, I had to bring it up because just look at the two next to each other. And this is an advantage of getting to handle a lot of knives all the time here at my job. This would not be a comparison I would ever make on paper. It's only because I've handled them that they feel kind of in the same ballpark, especially this premium version of the LRF right here with a titanium handle and a Damascus blade actually as well, coming in about 144. 
but the blade here is nice and thin, just like a leak. We've got a full height hollow grind. The Damascus is beautiful. It's a hundred and how many? 110 layers. And as you can see right there, the designer's name, this is a Kensei Matsuno design. Now, while there are versions of this LRF with this faux synthetic ivory here and a VG10 blade that can be had for about $60, it really is this titanium version that makes the, the leak comparison more of a, shall we say, a legitimate comparison. It's got that same great just a pocket knife vibe, works, maybe leans more into the gentlemanly side of things rather than the uh, slightly more aggressive side of things, but be that as it may. What it also has, similar to the leak, even though it is not an assisted opener, it's got great action. Ball bearings in the pivot, conventional flipper, at least in operation, it looks a little different. Almost like dual top flippers. Works as an index finger flipper, also works as a front flipper. So you get kind of the best of both worlds right there. Cleaner profile when open, not even a hint of a finger or a flipper tab to act as a finger guard in this case. But still, I really wanted to show these two side by side to get your folks's take on it. What do you think of this comparison right here? All right, continuing to move up into the premium side of things now with another titanium handle knife, but more than that in a second, the Artisan Cutlery Small Archeo. There is a large version of this knife, but it's in a different class. The three inch small version here, check it out next to the leak. Now I mentioned more premium, but you can actually get this with a G10 handle and D2 blade steel for as little as about $50 right now. Very compelling option right there. Bumping things up with the titanium handle scales or titanium handle with a carbon fiber inlay and a VG10 core Damascus blade here. This comes in about 183 and you can get it with an M390 blade as well for about 229. So it jumps up again from you know the S30 that you could get on something like the leak right now or the S35 I should say. But it's gonna cost a considerable amount more as you can tell as well. Finally put together knife, however. Nice sharp edge out of the box, designed by Dylan Mallory in this case, and a frame lock like the standard leak. What we get that the leak doesn't is a little bit more contouring, the inlay of course, and ball bearings in the pivot here rather than an assist for a very, very crisp opening action. The other thing you have with this knife is a thumb cutout. It's a little hard to do the reverse flick, at least for me, but if you wanted to open this knife a little more deliberately, it's an option you don't really have with the leak thanks to its spring assist, but on this knife, you do. All four of my fingers fit on this handle quite nicely overall. If you're looking for a more premium flipper base or a ball bearing based flipper knife, you could do a lot worse than this knife for sure. And then I would be remiss not to mention our lockable non-locking version, Knife Center exclusive, of the small Archeo. Same shape, and in a way, the polar opposite of the leak's opening method. I mean, we have spring assist versus not even a engaging lock on this particular knife. This is a detent joint. We have two detent bars acting on the blade, which means it's non-locking, but you can flick it closed in a way you can't with any of these knives, especially any assisted opening knives. And then if you do want some added safety, you've got the flipper tab to keep it from closing on your fingers. And you've also got that steel pin that comes with the knife that can be inserted to keep the blade from closing or opening if you install it in that position. And the price on these, well, this one right here features an S35 VN blade, marbled carbon fiber handle, comes in about 120. Next up, we've got a premium knife from We Knife Company. This is the Schism. S35 VN blade steel and a titanium handle with ball bearings in the pivot. Premium construction all around, but again, for talking value, same steel on this leak for $90. Have I mentioned this is only $90? Very good deal. But the way this Schism is built is just about perfect. I mean, utterly fantastic construction. Just enough for a three and a half finger grip for me, true Warncliffe profile, premium steel, but you have the hollow grind. So that's something that the S35 version of the leak 
doesn't do. If you want that hollow grind, you want that nice, thin, thin shoulder behind the edge, this is definitely gonna take the cake right there. Apart from that, we do have the frame lock, but we do not have a flipper tab on this knife. This is actually a thumb stud only knife, but despite that, as you can see, it flicks open beautifully. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Warncliffe versions of the Protec Malibu. This happens to be a very fancy version of this knife. Here it is next to the Kershaw Leak. As you can see, it is a little bit larger and definitely more than a little bit girthier. As such, it feels like a more substantial knife overall. Yet it still has kind of that same refined quality that you will find on the Leak. Now, standard versions of this knife come in at about 210 with an aluminum handle and a 20 CV blade. This is a made in America knife as well. This version right here, I actually don't know how expensive this one is. I just know this one is going to be quite a lot more than the 210. Similarly to, let's say, some of the Santa Fe Stoneworks versions that you can get of the leak where things are really pushed, the, uh, pushed to the nines in terms of their fanciness. You can get a lot of that with the Malibu and a lot of different Protex for that matter. This is a button locking knife. We have ball bearings in the pivot. Very satisfying action. Again, that's something that is a hallmark of the Kershaw Leak experience. And it's done a different way here on the Malibu, certainly, but you still get that awesome, awesome feeling. Pocket clip is deep carry. Like the CRKT we looked at before, it is inset with flush mounted screws. Very, very nice touch overall, and just a knife that exudes quality. I mean, look at that. If you don't like this blade shape, well, you're probably not interested in the leak either, but you can get a, uh, a quote unquote reverse Tonto bladed version of the knife, which you might not think is a competitor the, to the leak. But then of course we remembered the Kershaw random leak with its reverse Tonto version. So either one, I guess technically would be a leak competitor, no matter which blade shape you choose. Well, that's all I've got for this list. I would love to hear what you folks think of this competition. What here beats the Kershaw leak? Or does any of it beat the Kershaw leak? Or do you have something else you think should be in the conversation? Let us know down in the comments. If you wanna get your hands on any of these designs, check out the links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And don't forget about our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because if you're gonna buy one of these knives today, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.